down. So we've switched over to a different microphone. Uh, it's going to be a little echoey. It's working. It's working? We got audio. Okay, so we're going through the camera over here. Yeah. So um, we're not going through my microphone where I'm going to have to use a camera. It might be a little echoey, but at least we got sound. <laughs> so as I was saying earlier that you guys couldn't hear me, uh, Nick and I, uh, we just got back from last week. We spent a week over in England, uh, Manchester, England, where we worked with Traveler's Tales games, where uh, we did a, a few, three days of lectures and uh, demonstrations and that sort of thing. Had a really great time. Those are the guys that make all of the Lego video games. And so we really had a great time, toured the studio. Uh, but we also tagged on some time uh, and spent a few days out in the countryside. Uh, found this really great castle and just beautiful scenery all around and got really inspired. And Nick and I are trying, we're in the early stages of hopefully putting together a workshop where we bring in uh, 20 people and we stay at the castle and we go out and do some animal drawing and landscape painting and that sort of thing. That's going to be something that we might shoot for in July. If you guys are interested in that, please let us know. Um, it's it's uh, four days uh, staying in the castle. All food is provided. All transportation is going to be provided while you're in the workshop. You have to get yourself there. Um, and uh, it's going to be full of animal drawing classes, landscape painting, all kinds of stuff. Uh, myself and my great friend Ronnie Williford will be teaching and uh we've gotten the price tag down to about fifteen hundred dollars per person keep in mind i know that sounds a lot off the bat but that's four days of everything included food all food transportation and all the teaching so if that's something you guys might be interested in please let us know uh because if we do have a significant interest in it then we're going to really push hard and go for it uh today i wanted to get off the the computer and uh, get on the drawing board and sit up my easel and do some charcoal drawing with you guys. Uh, I wanted to show you a little demonstration. I pulled up a little image. Uh, this is one I did a while back on uh, in ink, but I wanted to do it in charcoal today. It's uh, this cougar. And I really like the light and shadow on it. And so that's what I'm going to use today as my reference. Uh, this is a cougar that I photographed up in Montana uh, this past summer. And uh, what a great model he was. His name is Smokey. And he was a smoky colored cat. He was really beautiful, really great shape. And uh, so I'm going to do that. Um, but once again, uh, as usual, I've got Dustin that's going to be helping with questions. Say hi, Dustin. Hey, everybody. And I've got my longtime business partner, Nick Birch. He's going to be in Sarasota. And he's going to be helping with questions as well. And we're just going to get to it. So, um, and as usual, you guys can ask questions. I'm not going to have them straight in front of me. I'm going to have them right over here. So I'm going to have to, Dustin, you're going to have to help me remind yeah. me to look over because <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be focused on, on this board. But uh, let's go ahead and switch cameras, Dustin. Done. And uh, hey, we got someone that says, hi, how you doing? Hi. <laughs> so the first thing that I do is I have uh, this vine charcoal. It's very soft. And uh, I'm going to get in here and I just rough in, I use my reference here and I'm just going to rough in basically where I want to make sure I'm drawing in the right place for you guys. Um, I'm just going to rough in this cat very, very quickly. And I use the vine charcoal because I can be very rough, very messy with it. And then I can rub it down. And I can come back in with my pencil, my charcoal pencils, and get a lot more detail. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm just going to, oh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about what we did. Um, the castle was great. Nick, Nick got to have beers in a pub, in a British, proper British pub. We had, we had so much fun. Dustin's Dustin, you would have loved it. Oh, um, I know I would. You would have loved it. And uh, we hung out with our friends, my friends, uh, Mike Stoll and Lucinda, Lucinda Britt. And so what all I'm doing, you can see here, so I can be very, very rough. And I want to think about that 
that anatomy, there's a cheek cheekbone that comes up underneath here, comes under here. I want to get that eye really accurate. Somebody, somebody commented, I'm scared of snapping the charcoal. <laughs> yeah, this, I, I, uh, the charcoal is so soft and it really is brittle, but I, um, I, uh, I go with a light touch. And somebody else asks, uh, I drawn, uh, I drawn charcoal too. Uh, what kind of charcoal do you recommend? Well, this right here, uh, that I'm using, uh, this is, um, Master Master's Touch Thin Vine ch uh, Charcoal Sticks, and uh, and then I use General's Charcoal Pencils, and uh, that's what I use. So I'm just going to rough all of this stuff in very, very quickly. And we're going to see if I can get a nice image done for you guys here in the next, I don't know, two hours or so. The uh, key here is, is, is making sure, for me, I like to try to get my drawing nice and accurate. Obviously. Kristen Von Benson asks, uh, wasn't Dustin in Hawaii? Uh, I don't know. Were you in Hawaii, Dustin? Uh, last time I was in Hawaii was during our Christmas trip all those years ago. <laughs> so, no, you weren't in Hawaii. I, I probably uh, thought that my vacation was from, in Hawaii. No, I was in L, I was in LA for my vacation. How are we looking up here? Do we have? Is it? Is, uh, I want to make sure that we're getting enough. It's fine. I want to make sure. Can you adjust the camera just a little bit? Just bring it up just a touch. I'm just gonna bring it up just a little bit. Up, 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 up. Right there, right there, right, right there. That's good. Um, that's perfect. Perfect. Perfect, baby. You sure? I'm, I'm sure. You sure that's good? I am sure that is good. Okay. And now I need a... So here we go. We Our space in here is a little tight. I, uh, I need a bigger room. Do it like a tiger. Do it like a tiger. Hello, guys from Kentucky. Hey, how you doing? So I just want to get I want to get all the markings. Uh, will you be using a white chalk or pastel for highlighting later in the drawing? I will. Yes, that's part of my that's part of my process. So as you can see, I'm working on a toned board as well, and so uh, that enables me to use that toned board to cover my uh, mid tones. So I'm really going to be penciling in all my darks. And the the board will be the midtones. Well, I'm just going to keep this very simple today. And uh, I'm also using charcoal powder. I'm going to be using that with uh, paper towels, and I'll show you how that works. Have you ever drawn with uh, charcoal that came from a grill? Uh, nope. <laughs> I have burned wood and used that as drawing material. When I was oh, out, really? yeah, out on, you know, out on location, nice. I've done that. So here I've got, you can see I'm quickly, very quickly just roughing stuff in here. There we go. Happy with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of a dark background and let the rest of the cat really kind of stick out. There's like a lot a, of fur texture in here. Yeah, go ahead. No worries. Uh, do you like charcoal reduction drawings? I do. So yeah, here I want to I want to get I want to get this a little more accurate in the way that the nose kind of comes down and fits the anatomy. There we go. So this is going to be very simple. I'm just doing this portrait today. That's all I'm going to do. So we got people saying hi from around the world. We got somebody from Paris, France, from Peru, from Greece. Right on. All over. Um, 
I've got some questions from Nick. It says, uh, have you ever rotoscoped an animation? I've never really rotoscoped. I have used live action, but I've never actually animated over the top of live action, which is rotoscoping. Uh, in Pocahontas, we, we used a lot of live action reference. We actually shot a lot of the uh, scenes in live action first and then used them as reference. We didn't actually rotoscope, but we did use them as reference. Then there's a Twitch comment. Not sure if it's just me, but I think the bridge about the nose needs to be a bit chunkier, if you get what I mean. <laughs> I do, and that's what I was trying to... I'm adding a little bit there. And when I go in with my pencil, I'm going to go a little bit more accurate. But right now, I'm just roughing in everything. And then YouTube question. What type of paper are you using? Oh, I'm glad you asked that. This actually isn't paper. I'm using uh, matte board. I really like the way matte board takes the charcoal. And uh, it just takes it really well. And um, so I, I really like to use that instead of paper when I'm doing my, when I'm doing my large charcoals. Did you work with James Baxter on The Lion King? Uh, well, we did work on the movie together. James Baxter was working in California, and I was working in Florida. So we didn't work directly together. And a lot of our shots were completely separate because James did Rafiki, and I did Young Nala. We really didn't do any shots together. So we knew each other, but we really didn't work together. So this next stage that I'm doing, you can see I'm just rubbing it down, trying to get rid of, just rubbing it down to a very light, just getting rid of a lot of the, can you see it? Yeah, you can see it's very light now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to take my charcoal pencils and I'm going to draw with that. And that's, this is where I'm going to get a lot more accurate. So I want to put my, my vine charcoal, I want to put that away, put it right back in the bag. I try to be very studious about putting things away. Otherwise, I end up with a big mess everywhere. Don't want that to happen. Well, no, and it's a, it's a small room. Uh, real quick, uh, what paper are you using? <laughs> are you being serious? Are you being serious? I already asked it, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> but this is, uh, this is, um, matte board. Same kind of board you use, you know, for mat for matting a, a painting, a, p a picture. And, uh, we got a Twitch question. This, my drawing looks flat. Does that mean I should think more about the whole object than the shape? Uh, how can I practice this? Well, just think, if your drawing looks flat, you really have to think three-dimensionally. That's, that's where you have to you know, think about not a flat image that you're creating, um, not the two-dimensional image, but how are you capturing the three-dimensional image? And that's even so, when, even if I'm working from a photograph, I'm trying to think of that object, whether it's an animal or landscape or whatever it might be, I'm trying to think of it three-dimensionally. There we go. So here, I'm trying to be a little bit more accurate with my drawing because from this is where I'm going to start pulling out highlights and having some fun with it. This is really kind of the where I started. You know, Before I was an animator, I, um, I was an illustrator and I went to school for illustration. And um, this technique that I'm showing you guys, it, it's a pretty common technique, but it's something I discovered on my own. I kind of made it up and it was after I kind of figured it out and started doing it on my own that I realized other people were doing it as well. So it was kind of, it helped me in, in the fact that I discovered it on my own and kind of perfected my own approach to it. You ever have any sort, sort of like a self-doubt or feel like you're having a, uh, feel like you're having a hard time or can't draw what you're, what you're working on? Yes, all the time. You know, and it happens to the best of us. And so when that happens, you just got to push through. You just got to know that you are good enough, doggone it. And people like you. <laughs> they do? <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, it's, yeah, it's something that we all kind of suffer through. And, uh, and you just got to, you just got to, you know, try to find where that self-doubt comes from. If you're struggling... Well, that means, look at the bright side. If you're struggling, that means you're learning, right? You're, you're, things aren't working and you're seeing that it's not working. So that means you're, 
you realize something's off. Uh, which animation program or programs uh, do you suggest for home users? I use TV Paint, and uh, and it really, for me, uh, it's, it tends to be a little bit more expensive, but it gives me everything that I need. And you don't need the studio version; you can just work with the standard version, and uh, especially if you're working at home. And it's uh, it's great. Matter of fact, we're using it to create our next animated short, Snow Bear. So I really recommend TV Paint. So here, like I said, I'm trying to draw very accurately. Nick says, also, if your drawing is flat, it might not have enough contrast in your values. That's absolutely correct. Look at your, your values. Although you can have a, a very shallow range of values and still have something that's very dimensional. So it's, a, it's really a matter of just thinking about it. <clears throat> Look at the value range, but also think about you know, the three-dimensionality of what it is that you're trying to create. Do you ever think this would be so much easier uh, digitally and then want to stop drawing traditionally? Uh, I've been drawing digitally for 13 years and I love it, but I still never get tired of working traditionally. There's something about having an actual piece of art that is physical right here, you know, that you can pick up and hold. And Now, I understand with digital art, you can print it out and everything. That's fine but it's still not an original. I still like the idea of having original art in my hands that I can touch and feel and all that. Stephanie on YouTube says, my 2D animation professor actually helped work on Brother Bear. Do you happen to remember Steve Quinton? I know Steve Quinton very well. And if Steve Quinton is watching, hello, Steve. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on the movie Mowgli? Um, it's funny you ask that. I actually... Early on, I did. Um, uh, I actually did animal designs for the film. Um, now, ultimately, I ended up leaving the film because I was trying for a much more realistic approach for the animals. I really enjoyed working with Andy Circus, who was the director, but he wanted to do something that was a bit more stylized, where the animals looked like humans in the face. And to me, I was I was having a hard time with that. It wasn't my it wasn't my tastes. And so ultimately, I left the project, um, but I understood that you know it was his it was his taste that he wanted to do, and I totally respected that. It just wasn't something it wasn't a, it wasn't my cup of tea, and I really struggled with it. I really couldn't give him what he wanted, and so I decided to leave, and it was fine. And we you know we parted ways very amicably, and um, and I just saw the movie uh, the other day, and I actually really enjoyed the film. I wasn't. Uh, like I said, the, my t I, the animals weren't my taste. I thought they were, um, it just wasn't, they weren't designed the way I would have done them, but I really enjoyed the film. And I have to say, after a while, you know, of watching the film, I kind of got used to the animals, although I just felt they were a little, they were a little interesting, a little odd. Yeah, the, uh, the person that asked the question uh, added behind that saying, I personally think your designs uh, for it were uh, so much better. I would have loved to see them. Well, I appreciate that, but once again, I think the film, I think the film was a great film. I loved that the, he, you know, went for that darker approach, which is more like the original story, and, uh, and I thought it had some really emotional moments in there. I know my daughter watched it, and uh, she cried three times watching it, but she cries at everything. Uh, Twitch question. Is it harder to get into storyboarding than it is animation? How should I go about getting into storyboarding? Can I still study my three-year animation degree and pursue storyboarding, or is there a different route? No, I think storyboarding along with understanding animation, I think, is a good route because I really do think as a good storyboard artist, you need to understand animation, and, and uh, you really need to know how to draw really well. And so I would definitely continue to uh, you know, pursue your animation. I don't think one is any easier or harder to get into than the other. They both have specific disciplines that you need to understand in order to, to do them. But I also think there's a huge amount of overlap in them. And so, matter of fact, a huge part of uh, storyboarding is very similar to the early stages of animation where you're posing out a scene and you have to find your main poses. And that's basically what storyboarding is as well when it comes to characters acting on the screen. But a storyboard artist also needs to understand cutting and 
cinematics and composition and all kinds of stuff. So for me, personally, I think the storyboard artist has to be one of the best artists on the crew because they, they really need to understand all of those elements. So, How do you do the shadows in charcoal? I'm going to get to that, so be patient. Right now, what I'm doing now is I'm laying down kind of the road map. I'm drawing in, I'm drawing in the the plan. I'm you know I'm trying to get the drawing in so that I can go in and start laying in my values. My values are light and dark. That's you know that's when we were when we refer to values in art, we're really referring to the lightness or darkness of something. Uh, do you have any favorite artists? I've got a lot of famous artists that there's too many to to list. But one of my two of my favorite classic, you know, turn of the century artists are Joaquin Soroya and uh, John Singer Sargent. I really love Sargent's work and Soroya's work. They were contemporaries and uh, absolutely incredible portrait artists and painters of light. They really could paint light. What about Bob Ross? <laughs> I love Bob <laughs> Ross too. So here I'm just kind of laying in very roughly where I want things to go. Textures, that sort of thing. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to rub all this down again. I'm going to cover it in uh, charcoal dust. And all that's going to be left behind is this line that I've created with this pencil. So that's going to get, be my guide to uh, to get uh, my values correct. And I'm going to get really messy. What paper am I using? <laughs> I'm using... <laughs> I am using mat board. What paper is it? <laughs> Neat question. Yeah. <laughs> Does Aaron know about Lion Whisperer, feline preservational group from South Africa? He loves drawing big felines. I'm not... I don't know about Lion Whisperers. Uh... But I will check them out. We're going to be going to, uh, maybe we're going to South Africa uh, in March. So we'll, if, if, uh, if we're nearby, we'll, we might check them out. I'm assuming it's over near Kruger, but I don't know. Hello, here here. I'm just, oh, I got one more question here. YouTube question. What's the difference between illustrator and animator education-wise and career-wise? Well, an illustrator is just that. I, I learned to draw, paint, illustrate, you know, for magazines, books, uh, uh, uh whatever it's you know it's it's a commercial enterprise uh it's not too far off of fine art you know because you're still learning how you know, you know the basics of drawing and painting and everything else whereas animation is a completely different discipline we overlap in the sense there's a lot of drawing and draftsmanship that needs to happen but uh animation the skill of animation is completely different than when than illustration uh, when it comes to the act of animation and you know creating life and moving it across the screen Just trying to create a little bit of texture in the neck here, a little fur texture that I'm going to go in and maybe get a little rougher with in just a bit. Can I have a question here? Yeah. Uh, I love your traditional tutorials. Uh, when will your watercolor course come out? You know what? We have plans for that. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, I just finished... Uh, just finished... Um, my brand new course on acting for animation and that just came out yesterday so if you guys are interested in acting for animation it's over 20 videos um i don't even know how many hours it is i know it's a lot but it's over 20 videos and it really covers my entire approach to how i act for animation from the thumbnailing to you know roughing out taking those poses and putting them on the timeline phrasing dialogue which means understanding you know, how do you break up a line of dialogue into phrases so that you can create poses for, for various phrasing. And then straight ahead animation, pose to pose animation. It covers a whole bunch of my different approaches and how I do it. 
Uh, like I said, it just came out yesterday, and uh, I really enjoyed creating. It took me three months to create the course. Uh, it's a lot of original animation that I created for the course itself. And uh, so we just got that out. And uh, we're also doing the 12 days of, of uh, Christmas uh, sales. And today, um, our, all of our animal drawing courses that I've created, every single one of them that's on the site is on sale today. So, and that's just for today only. So check that out because it's, uh, it's a good deal. I think they're 35% off if I'm, wrong, if I'm not mistaken. Nick will tell me if I'm wrong because he's texting me right here on this next... Uh, next to me. Rivers is watching. He hurt his arm. <laughs> oh. Rivers is Nick's son. He hurt his arm, so watching Uncle Aaron is making him happy. There we go. That makes me happy. Hi, Rivers. Hey, Rivers. I wonder if he knows that I'm talking to him. Hello, Rivers. <laughs> so, I've got something roughed out here. Like I said, here is the here's the reference. The ref Oh, there it is. The reference. And, um, and I've got something roughed out on the board. Now what I want to do, this is where it gets, it can be kind of messy. So I want to be careful not to get too messy. Uh, but I have this plate right here. And I've got charcoal powder right here. And I'm going to pour that out onto the plate. Some, some, not all. Hey, for the reference photo, what kind of paper is that using? <laughs> yeah, but this actually, never gets old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you prefer animal art? So, uh, for example, like if there were two separate art galleries, one was mostly human art, another was uh, animal art, but both are the same quality. Uh, which which gallery would you rather go to? I I prefer animal art. I'm just fascinated by wildlife and and that sort of thing. And so for me, uh, that's what I prefer. So what I'm doing now is I've got this charcoal dust on the plate and I'm just dabbing the paper towel into it and I'm going to be rubbing it right here up and down and it creates a nice I'll move that out of the way creates a nice background, but it's also giving me a tone from which to pull out all of the highlights in the cat. Uh, do you think hand-drawn animation will come back to Western features? I think it will someday. I, it's, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon, but I do think it'll come back. Right, right here, I want to get this all nice and... I'm going to stop talking for just a second while I get this just right. So as you can see, I've got this tone that I can, it's almost airbrushy, it's very soft. And, and it's, and you can see, I don't know if you can, you barely, you can barely see the drawing that I've done <clears throat> through that tone. I want to rub this in just a little bit more. Now I'm going to set this off to the side, my charcoal dust, which I, I barely used any, boy that's a, lot of, that's a lot of wasted dust. And so what I want to do now is I'm going to start pulling out highlights. I'm going to start drawing with my kneaded eraser, this is my kneaded eraser, my gummy eraser, and I'm going to start pulling out highlights. <clears throat> along the bottom and top and, and start forming looking for the for the lights so here we go so this is this is where it's going to start taking form I might bring this down a little bit I don't know if that's going to knock it out completely oh is that too low that's um, way too low yeah I can lower the camera or... now there's this there we go yeah, okay, it's the same spot. 
So I'm going to get in here. I'm hopefully, am I, am I getting in the way? Can you tell if I'm getting in the way? I think you should be fine. So what I'm going to start doing here, actually I might stand up because I want to get this just right. You're, you're so, way in the way. You're I'm way in the way. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just going to do this. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. So I want to make sure I'm not blocking you guys. I don't know if you already explained it, uh, um, but uh, do you use uh, paper smudge sticks? I don't. I haven't. I no. I haven't said that, and I don't really use them that much. Um, I uh, rather than using the smudge sticks, I try to um, get the effect just through blending. Um, with the with a uh, with the utensil itself, with the drawing utensil. Uh, for people that don't uh, know char charcoal styles, uh, what exactly is a paper smudge stick? A paper smudge stick is a it's a very compressed piece of paper that's it's it's formed like a uh, pencil, but you, it, but it's like a stump. Uh, you use the whole thing, and you can use that to blend graphite and charcoal, and it gives it a soft edge. You can soften edges with it. Oh. So here, and this is a mall stick right here. And this, I use this to kind of put up here, and I can. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get in the way just for a minute, because I it's up above my head, and I can't see. I'm just going to have to get in the way. I apologize, but I'm just going to run. I'm telling you, I can lower the camera if you want to lower the picture. <laughs> Am I totally in the way? Not totally in the way. All right. Um, there we go. Uh, could you do the, this same technique with graphite dust? Uh, you could. The graphite might adhere a little bit more, and so it might be a little bit more difficult to uh, erase out areas yes yeah, focused on the threads of your back <laughs> oh gotcha there we go but what I'm doing is I'm slowly erasing away the highlight areas and then I'm going to go back in with a lighter pencil and brighten them even more. But I'm trying to define all of my shadow shapes right now. There we go. Oh, don't worry, Aaron, we got your back. <laughs> oh, am I in the way again? <laughs> Yeah, the camera for some reason is focused on the back of your head. Oh, uh, you know what? We have it on autofocus. That's the problem. We should have put it on manual and focused on the board. Yeah, I don't know how to set up the uh, manual focus on these cameras. It says, I, uh, Twitch, uh, Twitter question, or Twitch, I can't tell. I have this problem that my hands sweat a lot when I work with charcoal. It tends to become a mess after a while. What should I do? Wear gloves. There's a lot of people that wear gloves that have the same issue. So I'm slowly pulling out highlights. There we go. Slowly pulling them out, trying to define all of my shadow shapes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in with both my light pencil and my dark pencil and define them even more. This is kind of the rough stage of figuring out My light patterns. 
So I'm literally drawing with my eraser. Drawing with my eraser, that's the key. And you'll see I jump all over the place. I want, I'm, I'm trying to keep it all balanced. Questions coming up yet? That's okay. You just answered the one that uh, Nick posted, right? Yes, about sweating, ha sweaty hands. Sweaty hands. Sweaty. So sweaty. So my comment is, <laughs> to be honest, I'm digging the hair patterns and colors on your head. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, I think if, they, if they're digging it, you need to show more of it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Sorry if this has been asked before, but do you prefer to print out your reference instead of using a digital reference? No, I, well, it depends on what I'm using. So if I'm, if I'm doing something traditional, then yes, I prefer to print it out. Um, if I'm working digitally, then I just keep it digital. I keep it on the screen. I'm constantly kneading the eraser, stretching it to get rid of the, the graphite that or the charcoal that builds up. Uh, can you pull out midtones and use a white uh, pastel for highlights? That's what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm, the board I'm actually using is midtone. So I let the board be my midtones and then I pull out my darks and my lights. So slowly, ever so slowly, you'll see the shapes start to emerge. It takes a little while. But I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm literally drawing with my, with my eraser. We have enough. I'm just. It feels like it's too dark in here. But no, I guess I guess it's working. We're good. I'm so glad your live streams are are back. When will the next one be? Tuesday, the usual. Uh yes. We're as we get closer to Christmas, we'll start doing some Christmas themed live streams. Ooh. YouTube question, have I seen Ralph Breaks the Internet? I have not, although I plan on seeing it. So I will be seeing it hopefully soon. Does I've it... seen it and I love it. Yeah, Dustin saw it. That's right, you saw it. Yeah. Fantastic movie. Definitely a must watch. There we go. There says he should be a model for Just for Men, Touch of Grey. <laughs> We were just talking about my lovely gray hair today. Indeed we were. I earned every one of those gray hairs. <laughs> I remember the, the first time I saw you with gray hair was when I was um, visiting from Canada, I think. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh my God, you're turning gray. Yeah. <laughs> Getting old, man. That's what we do. Don't waste your life. Get out there and do stuff, because you get old. You get old before you know it, you're going to be like me. Twitch question. Could this, uh, referring to drawing from reference, be in our portfolio for applying for a job? Of course. You know, I shoot my own reference, so this is, this is my reference that I decide to do with as I see fit. So right now I'm trying to work out the, the shapes. If 
for the, the dark marking on the lips right there slowly it's coming together I, I purposely chose a board that's slightly darker than mid-tone so that I could really use a lot of the white and so you'll see that like right underneath the chin here where the, they have white fur um, it's the same value as what's up here, but what's up on top, I'm actually going to go in with a brighter pencil and get rid of a lot of that, or not get rid of it, but I'm going to brighten it up even more so it'll read more like light, and this will start looking like it's in shadow. It'll look like lighter fur, but in shadow. That's going to be the goal. Uh, sorry for the odd question, but have you ever had a point in your art career where it felt like you weren't improving? If so, how do you work yourself past that mid, that mindset? It's, the, the crappy answer is you just have to keep doing it. You gotta keep going and push through it. Um, that's the only way to get through. And I know that you, that's, you want a, a better answer than that, but there really is no better answer. You just have to, you have to push and push and push and just have faith that you're going to get better. What shampoo do you use, Aaron? Nice hair. <laughs> I I don't know what shampoo. I, I, I buy whatever is on sale. <laughs> so, so you're not used to like a specific brand? No. You know, nice. I just got my hair cut. So it's, it's nice. It's a nice fresh cut right now. What brands of art materials are you using uh, for this piece? And what brand of paper or board is this? Oh, okay. One more time, Dustin. <laughs> hey, I'm... I'm working on matte board. It's a straight-up matte board that you can get at any uh, framing store. And uh, and the charcoal, I'm using uh, General's Charcoal. This is a uh, just a regular kneaded eraser that you can get at any uh, art store and um, and then general I, I go on Amazon and I order general's charcoal pencils in bulk I order like 15 packs at a time because I go through them like crazy especially when I'm doing stuff like this so here I'm you can see how I can draw with this eraser I can squeeze an edge get it to come out oh there's I'm sorry Nick I, I know there's one other question that I didn't get to I was trying to get this here. There. So you can see as I as I use this eraser and pull out highlights and draw with it, you can see that it just with the eraser how much form we're getting. It's kind of cool. And then once we start getting in there with the, with the pencil, pencil, then it gets, it gets even better. I'm just going to keep working. I'm really looking for my light and dark patterns. And I try to keep it, you know, kind of loose, especially with fur. Don't worry about, you know, people get so hung up on making sure that the fur, you know, they get every hair and all that. You don't have to do that. You just want to make sure you're getting the shapes as strongly as you can. So you look what I'm doing here. I'm just, just, treating it somewhat loosely uh, who's interviewing you sounds familiar that is Dustin Blaze my son hi my spawn <laughs> so do we get your references if uh, we subscribe to your uh, creature art teacher site yes yeah, so for all of the animal courses that I do, um, you'll get all of my references that I use along with uh, locomotion because I'll go through and show you how I animate those animals as well. 
Um, you get a lot of different things. But yes, you'll get you'll get reference photos, and they're all photos that I've shot throughout my travels around the world. So, like for the big cats, for instance, you're getting photographs of you know lions that I shot in the wild, that I photographed in the wild, I should say, not shot. Obviously, I'm not out there shooting lions. We want to make sure I'm getting this really erased back as much as I can. Especially, you know, in areas where you want it to be really bright, where you know you're going to go in with a white charcoal pencil, um, you want to make sure you get as much char uh, dark charcoal pigment out of there as you can because it'll just turn to mud. Is there any tablets you would recommend for digital drawing while on the road? Um, I think... Wacom puts has a their studio companion their uh, what is it not companion studio pro I think is what it's called um, I think it's a really good and you can use it as a uh, as a monitor too if you wanted uh, uh, sit, use it at home um, but also iPad is great with procreate iPad is really great How important is it for an animator to learn photography? An animator to learn? I don't know that it is that important for an animator to learn photography. Um, it'll help you if you want to shoot your own reference. It'll help you if you, you know, to learn videography. Uh, and if you're learning videography, you're going to be learning the basis of photography. So, I just, I don't know that it's hugely important, but... I'm also a big advocate of just educating yourself. So anytime you're learning anything, I think you're benefiting yourself. I think it's important to learn everything. <laughs> Put it that way. Learn as much as you can. That to me is important. Have you ever tried vector art? Hey! Hello, Khaleesi on Periscope. Oh, he's in Uganda. That's very cool. I'm sorry, Dustin, what did you say? Um, That's all right. Sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... I got it. Um, have you ever tried vector art? No, I don't like vector. I don't like drawing in vector. I've tried it, yes, and I'm not crazy about it. Uh, how many drawings should I put in my Disney art portfolio? Um, there's no set number. You just want to make sure you put your best drawings in there. Uh, put your best work in. It doesn't need to be a huge amount. You don't want it to be too thin, but you don't want it to be a big, you know, encyclopedia either. So it's a, you know, it's the right amount, but it, more importantly, it's the right drawings. Make sure you put your best work in there and not just a lot of work. So here I'm, I'm just kind of finishing up the highlights with my eraser. Uh, and then, uh, question, if I want to be an animal creature designer, can I submit my portfolio full of animal creature design species, some of them drawn from reference, drawn from imagination? Oh, absolutely. Just as long as they're good. You know, that's really the key. People don't, you know, they, they don't want them all, you don't want to be copying Google images because people are going to recognize them. You know, don't, don't plagiarize. Don't do that. You know, try to photograph as much as you can of your own work. Or if you if you use reference from someone else, change it up. Make sure you change it up. You know, don't don't ever copy reference verbatim. And then, uh, have I watched David Attenborough's Di Dynasty series yet? I have not. There's an episode called Lion, and it had so many great shots of lions. I plan on watching it because I've heard some great stuff. I know Nick has watched a little bit of it. <clears throat> with the wild dogs and uh and he told me it was great so i'm definitely going to get in there and uh see what i can do so you can see i've got very rough kind of light patterns set up here have you ever had the feeling you had to relearn everything <laughs> 
Uh, no, I haven't. But she, I do feel like sometimes I haven't learned enough. So that just spurs me to learn more. <laughs> Please give us the secret for that amazing, thick, gray, abundant hair. Good genes, my good friend. Good genes. <laughs> All right. So I've got I've got my uh, my rough light pattern in. Now I want to go in and start uh, adding my lights. Actually, I think I'm going to go in with my darks first. I'm going to go back and forth. To be honest with you. So with that, for that, I'm going to use my two B, and you're going to hear my pencil sharpener go. says, I've heard that you can spray fix uh, on charcoal and then work over it in a layering technique. Is that true? And would you recommend it uh, if you're messy? I am. Um, I actually don't recommend that. And the only reason is when you spray fix charcoal, it changes the value. So it changes what you've done. I, I recommend just disciplining yourself and trying to be more careful. So here, what I'm going to do is start drawing... I'm going to have to go, I'm going to go very quickly and kind of go loosely. Because otherwise this will turn into a six hour stream. <coughs> nice, Dustin. How are you? Do you need a Heimlich? <coughs> I'm fine. Um, have you ever tried drawing with an XP pen? I don't know that I have. An XP pen. Yeah, I don't know what that is either. Uh, do you learn to draw Disney-ish? Uh, someone told me about a school where they teach you to draw in more Disney style so you can work for Disney. Well, Disney doesn't look for people that draw in their style. That's not what Disney look for. looks for. People, uh, Disney looks for people that can draw and, you know, paint well. And... Uh, the style just comes out of naturally when you work on, you know, from picture to picture. Um, but you know, they, they don't set out looking for people that can that draw on their style. I don't recommend putting together a portfolio of Disney, you know, cartoons and things like that. That's not what they want to see. I was part of the review board for almost 25 years. And I really, we didn't want to see that. What we wanted to see was people that could draw. That's really what we wanted to see. And so if you can show that you can draw, you can paint, you can design, then that's, that's what we wanted to see. Now granted, you know, don't put, don't put together a portfolio of Simpsons cartoons either. Because, you know, you want to make sure you're in the right style. But, you know, just a portfolio of good drawings, really, is, is what you need. So here I'm working that eye. I want to get that eye looking right. And I'm really being sensitive to the values, making sure I'm getting the reflection in the eye right. Trying very hard to go really dark with my darks uh youtube question hi big fan thank you what should my reel have to get into big companies like disney or pixar i'm an animator well you should have animation and i know that sounds like okay duh but you should have really great animation don't put animation in of your first walk cycle in college they want to see great character animation that's what disney wants to see and and it's tough and if you don't have that then it's good it's a good practice to get in there and add it that's what you want to have in your portfolio how do you use reference but not be a slave to it well it comes from understanding the object that you're creating so i know a lot about big cats and their anatomy already and so even though I'm using reference for this one, 
um, if I want to change it, I have enough knowledge of the anatomy that I can go ahead and change it, and it's still going to be accurate. And that's basically what it means by you know not being a slave to your reference. Change it to you know make it you you're creating the illustration. The reference isn't creating the illustration. The reference is there to help you create the illustration. You have the illustration in your head, hopefully, and that's what you're going to use that reference to help you achieve. Is there such a such a is there such a thing as a special artist chalk, or can you use any type? Well, I'm using specific charcoal today, charcoal pencils. Um, there's cheaper kinds than others, yeah. So I wouldn't, I, you know, you want more pigment in your in uh, your pastel or or chalk or whatever it is, however you want to call it, whatever you're working in, you want more pigment so that uh, it adheres better, and you have you have better control. Here I'm just working the shadows. How did you do research for a new character at Disney? Can you tell us about it? How did you approach it? Yeah, I mean, doing research, you know, this is, especially back in the early days, you know, we didn't have the internet. We, uh, like for, for like, uh, on Lion King, for example, when we did that, we brought lions into the studio. And, you know, we looked at videotapes and, whatever we could find. This is back in the days of VHS, you know, so we, uh, we would look at videotapes and, but the biggest, the best reference we got was when we brought the, the cats into the studio and we were drawing them from life. So anytime we could do that, that was always great. And, you know, you have to really strive to, to do, you know, to get the best reference you can. And that sometimes that means trying to get the real thing. And I know a lot of people will go, well, you know, not all of us can get, can do that. Well, you have to try. And if you can't, then you're going to have to suffer with not having done it. Sorry, I missed the beginning, but uh, are you drawing right on the map board? And did you tape around it to create the straight edges? Oh, uh, no, the, uh, the straight edges. No, this is... This is just another board that I have the brown board sitting against, if that's what you're asking. Um, yeah, I'm drawing right on it. It's a map, uh, map paper, not map board. This is map board. Oh it's, oh, it's a map board paper? It's not paper, it's board. It's like cardboard. Oh. Oh, the board that the paper is sitting on. Yes. No, the... I'm not, no, I'm drawing on Matt Board. That I'm drawing on, this is Matt Board. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see, as I work the darks, it starts getting a little bit more dimensionality to it. Uh, can you show the whole stick, both ends? Uh, did you make it yourself? Yeah, I did make it myself. So here's the whole stick, and on the end... It's got a pair of socks. It's got just a balled up couple of socks and duct tape. And so I just rest that against whatever surface I could get it on. In this case, it's my easel. And I just, you can buy them. I don't recommend buying them because you can make them super easy. Just go to the store and get some dowel wood and tape, you know, tape a couple of socks on the end and you've got a mall stick. It works great. Where's Gray? It's Gray. <laughs> How did you, uh, so you said it's a pair of socks? Yeah, just socks. Just wrap, just bunch up some socks on the end of it and, and tape them off with duct tape. Oh. Super easy. Easy pay. So here I'm just working this, getting these darker values, working it, working it, working it. Do you ever digitally tweak scans of traditional art? I'm tempted to spend as much time tweaking as I do drawing. I'm not sure I know what that means. 
Like, do you like do you scan the the traditional drug that you made in oh. the computer and then? No, but you know what I do sometimes. Oh, actually, real quick, there's a secret sale for those that are watching the stream. So this is really big for you guys. There's a secret. Nick just told me there's a secret sale. Use a promo code charcoal stream when you check out. If you go to the website creatureartteacher.com and use the promo code charcoal stream, you'll get 35% off of my charcoal course. Oh snap! Yeah. So there you go. It's a super super secret sale only for the streamers. So back to the uh, uh, digital tweaking question. Yes. So. Uh, yeah. Oh, so what I do, um, if I'm doing a traditional painting or drawing, and I'm struggling with it. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll photograph it digitally and I'll bring it into Photoshop and work it in Photoshop trying to get it, you know, trying to solve the problem there. And then I'll print that out and use it as a reference for, and finish. So I do that. So here this is all coming together nicely. I want to get a little dark up in here. And this is my chance, too, to get some fur texture. Oh! What'd you do? It, it broke inside the pencil sharpener. Oh, no. See, that's a bad thing, because then my, I can't sharpen any more pencils. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's no good. Oh, is, it. is it jammed in there? Or? Yeah, it's jammed in. I'm just gonna have to go through and just start using a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of these. Well, you can do the old, you can do uh, old fashioned, just sharpen it with a knife. Yeah, it might need to do that. But here we go. So, just gonna go in and get some texture in here. Mike Kayata asks, "What the heck does Aaron do?" With what must be thousands of sketches, does he just have crates? Are those or of those or are they or slowly recycle all of it? Both. <laughs> I do have lots and lots of stacks of sketchbooks and and uh, piles of drawings, old drawings. A lot of them are in storage. Um, yeah, you're right. I have. I do have an excess. Yeah, we've been making a few plans for our, for those in the past. But. Yeah. But uh, how should a beginner approach learning the art of story? Well, there's a lot of books out there that can help you with that. One of them is called Story by Robert McKee. And uh, that one I highly recommend. That was one of the first books I read on creating scripts and that sort of thing. Uh, there's one, by, the one called Save the Cat by Blake Snyder. That's really good. So I would recommend reading those first, starting with that. And that really, it opens up a whole world of writing for you. So I'm going to jump back over now. I'm going to jump over to one of the, whoa, hello. Hi. <clears throat> I'm going to jump over to, um, there we go, my white charcoal. Start working that, and you can see we'll start getting some nice dimensionality happening. Good for the um, for the stick. Uh, do you usually hold the stick at the bottom, or is there another sock there? I just no. There's not another sock. I just use it where it's comfortable. So you don't hold the bottom? Not necessarily. Sometimes I will. It's only where it's just basically where it's comfortable. At, the, at whatever moment I'm using it. So here, I'm going in and really adding highlights. This is where it's gonna start to really pop. This is where, oh, this is going to be good. 
This is one of my favorite stages. You start getting those lights in there. Yeah, would you sell the copy that you make? Like the original? Sure. I'll sell any of my art. I don't usually sell it because that's really not my focus anymore. My focus is teaching. So I end up with a lot of art that I've viewed, that I've created through teaching. And then it just kind of sits in the closet. We haven't, we don't really focus on selling it really anymore. Uh, so for the stick, it's currently leaning on the easel shelf. Yeah, it's on the edge of the easel because gotcha. I don't want to smear the charcoal. Uh, <laughs> Nick wrote, "That's why real men always sharpen their, <laughs> always sharpen with a Bowie knife." <laughs> yes, I know, I know. That ain't a knife. That's annoying. Uh, question. I need to get a day job to survive, and I'm getting a bit anxious because I'm scared that I won't get enough time to work on my drawing skills. Any advice? Make the time. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Uh, there's no other advice to give you other than that. You know, when I was at Disney, I still wanted to be a painter. And so Disney, even though I was animating, was technically my daytime job because I still wanted to be a gallery painter. And so I would come home and I would play with my kids and get dinner going. And, you know, I, I would do a full day at Disney. And then, uh, and then after that, I would start at nine o'clock every evening. And this is what really helped me is, you know, being very disciplined in uh, my approach. I treated it just like a job and I would start every night nine o'clock and I would start doing my paintings and I did it five days a week a, a week I treated it like a job so I a didn't week. get burned out a <laughs> week. <laughs> and uh, and it really it, it being that disciplined really helped get a lot of work done and so that's that's how I did that uh, is it possible to achieve the same effect on uh, Strathmore paper with charcoal? Sure, if it's tone. How do you decorate your Christmas tree? With, with the tears of young children. <laughs> <laughs> the tears of young children. I love it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, with, with, with decorations. <laughs> No, just with yeah, just with with ornaments like anybody else. I tend to be more of a kind of a a Scrooge, and I well, we we would we would up um, until recently, yeah. I was I wasn't even you know when I was living by myself, I wasn't even getting a tree or doing any of that. But uh, but when we were younger, oh yeah, um, we did a Christmas tree thing. But we wouldn't we did. have like a a real tree. We only did that once. Um, we usually had a uh, one of those built built up trees artificial yeah the artificial trees and that was actually a lot of fun uh building. i remember austin and i like every year we would put that thing together yeah and but now you can, just real i'm sorry dustin you yeah. can see now <clears throat> as i use this white charcoal pencil it's starting to uh it's starting to get some dimensionality go ahead dustin sorry to interrupt no, no worries but um yeah we always have fun uh building those up then we had the different ornaments from like Star Wars, Disney, yeah. uh, stuff that we made at, in school, and um, yeah, it was always a good time. Yeah. Christmas is a great family holiday. And we had the bu the the bubble lamp lights. Yeah, you remember those? I do. Uh, those were my favorite lights. Um, I think I've got one over here. What's my thoughts on the Milan sequel? I can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see it. Where can I uh, buy your drawings? <laughs> Nick says, oh my God, we've been hanging out too long because I literally just said the tears of young children as I said it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Nick, we should be partners. <laughs> but where, where, can, where can we buy your drawings? Uh, nowhere. I don't have them for sale. <laughs> Or maybe we'll put them out there at some point. We have the uh, digital prints on the site, right? Or yeah, yeah, but I don't have any originals up for sale right now. Oh no, originals. Is human anatomy the first thing every artist should learn? 
Uh, I don't know that it... I don't think there's any hard, fast rule about what you should learn first and should learn second and all that. I mean, human anatomy, I think, is something you should learn eventually because it's it's difficult to draw and, that it's, and it helps you understand form and it's just, it's a great thing to learn. Uh, beyond that, just drawing the world around you is, you know, helpful. You know, help be becoming an observer. You know, that's what you should be as an artist, an observer. We search with a with the phrase "do what you got to do" with a pic with a picture of Grumpy Aaron. That will <laughs> keep people inspired. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. No, what I think we need is a like a cartoonish Disney version of you, like all all happy on a draw on a drawing desk. With a little quotation. There we go. There we go. So all I'm doing here is I'm going to add a little bit of... And what we might, what we might want to do, Dustin, well, when we get this done, uh -huh. is for you to pull that camera and do a little handheld. Will we be able to do that? Or no? I think we can do it with the, with the small, small one. Uh... The face cam one because that one, this one is here? Uh, yeah yeah because that's either one the, uh, it doesn't matter yeah yeah because the uh, one that we're currently using right now that one's um, on on an arm and it's screwed in so yeah so yeah, we would need to switch to the other one for your close up close up close up turn it off turn it off. <laughs> Uh, do you have a human anatomy course? Yes, I do. One of our biggest sellers. It's one of our biggest sellers. It's human the anatomy. The biggest in the world. I do have a human anatomy course. And it's, and it's, I want to be, reiterate, if you're looking for something where you're really wanting to find out about specific musculature and the proper names for everything, it's not that. And I recommend uh, other artists for that. But if you're looking for, it's really my approach to how I draw human anatomy. And it's it's more about understanding the shapes and rhythms of the human body. Uh, I do tell you a little bit about musculature, but I don't get super deep into it. So here you can see by balancing out as I get these these light areas drawn in, it really starts to balance out that the value structure. I like to keep it very simple. I recommend you should put a GoPro on your head. <laughs> That'll be like, if you did that, it would look like the, uh, what's the one where they, the drunk guys in Vegas, they're, tr they're trying to find their buddy. Oh, um, hangover. Yeah, it'll look like a hangover cam. It'll look like a <laughs> drunk cam. No, it looks like the uh, hardcore Henry. Yeah, ex oh yeah, exactly, yeah. hardcore Henry. So, I know it doesn't look like it, because I think from a distance it looks probably a little bit tighter than it really is, but I'm keeping this really pretty loose. <clears throat> and you can see how quickly we can get something done with this technique. It's a great technique, it's a lot of fun, and it's relatively easy. Uh, what will your next animal course be and when will it be published? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Um, we've had a lot of requests for primates, which I plan on doing. We've had a lot of requests for underwater. Underwater? Underwater. Underwater. <laughs> uh, creatures. And um, I'd like to do... Uh, there's another one I wanted to do is uh, Africa's 
Africa's giant creatures like elephants, rhinos, giraffes, hippos, you know, that sort of thing. I always thought that would be kind of fun. I thought you already did a elephant course. Oh, I haven't. Actually, I haven't done a video elephant course. I've just got the PDF. And actually, doing a full elephant video course would be really great. Because I do have a lot of elephant... Uh, uh, the elephant experience yeah, in my head and um, I'd like to do something like that still miss that one painting that you had of the elephant that extra large oil painting I had to sell it man yeah was it was down down on my picture. luck down on my luck I had to sell my art yeah it was beautiful art though thank you like every time one of my friends saw it I was like oh that's a huge photograph where'd you get that printed <laughs> that's not a printout that's a that's my dad's oil paint. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> but that was an elephant that actually chased us down. I was photographing her as she was chasing us. Then when we got home, I did the painting of her. Will we be seeing a snow bear sometime soon? Yes, we are. We are working on it. I, it's. I wouldn't say it's soon, <laughs> but we are working on it. It's. It's coming out next week. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> so I'm getting a nice balance. Uh, I'm liking the balance I'm getting in my light, my light values. Are very lightly go underneath. And some of my uh, dark values. I want to go back in now with uh, some of my darker values and balance that out. Go back to the, doing those again. Uh, what do you prefer, uh, drawing on a horizontal surface or vertical, and why? And if I'm doing, if I'm working really big, I like to work vertical like this. Well, oh, you're, you're talking about the framing, probably. If you're talking about the framing. The, the just as, as far as composition goes to me it doesn't matter whatever if the, if it's a good composition then that's the the format that I'm going to go if you're talking about working like this vertically like on an easel or horizontal on a desk once again it depends on what I'm doing if I'm working small then I want to work on a desk are there There's, any pros and cons of those no just taste It's just whatever your tastes are. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in with some of these and get some of these darks. YouTube question. Would you ever take a fan submissions and develop, uh, develop accentuate the image digitally and a sketch session? Uh, probably not. Um, I think if I did some one-on-one -on -one stuff, I might do stuff like that with, with people one-on-one. -on -one. But that's not, that's not really my, I don't think that's something I want to do. Um, I, can give exam, you know, I can give demos that might cover something like that. But I don't want to work on, on top of other people's work. Um, yeah, Birds of Prey, Nick is telling me. I, yeah, that's, that's probably the next one we're going to do that I completely forgot. Uh, as far as the animal drawing courses, uh, is Birds of Prey. We've been getting a lot of requests for that, and that's really up my alley. So yeah. like eagles, owls, yep. fox? Exactly. Falcons. All of the above. All of them. That's going to be a fun one. Oh, yeah. I think that warrants a trip to Manchester just to shoot the reference of the... Of the Falcons, Nick. You just want an excuse to go back there. I do. I really, <laughs> I loved, I really loved it over there. We had such a good time. It's kind of like me saying, I want to go to Tokyo for the, for the reference of their Pokemon and Gundam. <laughs> I'm going to take you to Tokyo. Don't worry. Uh-huh. Drawing yourself as a traditional Disney villain, that'd be a live stream. <laughs> you know what? That's actually a great, that's a great idea. I kind of like that. It? Drawing myself as a traditional Disney villain. Oh, wow. I think that's a, a kind of a cool idea. 
Or you can uh, uh, draw a caricature of yourself as Santa Claus. Yeah, that's well, that's not much of a stretch. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but what kind of villain would, would you be for Disney, though? I don't know. That's a real question. Uh, Twitch question. On the head of your drawing, the single hairs with the white and on the neck, you will do in clumps, right? Why? On the head of your, on the head, you're drawing the single hairs with the white. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you're talking about the hairs, like the whiskers and all that, I'm going to do that with my charcoal pencil. I'm going to do that. Oh, if you're talking about on the neck, too, yes. It's just done in clumps. I don't, I don't worry about single hairs. That's not... I'm not here to create a photograph. I'm here to create a piece of art, and so um, I don't. That's not a right. That's not right. The right way to say it. I I'm not interested in doing hair by hair by hair. I just want to create what we you know an illusion of what we see and uh, and what we feel. And I and for me, I, I don't need to go in and create every single hair in order to do that. I hope you can kind of see that as I work. I'm really not, I'm not spending the time to do every hair. I'm just really working on, you know, I do try to get a fur texture, but I'm doing it in kind of a shorthand. Uh, what gear do you use to film your demos? Um, I've got Sony uh, digital cameras. And then I also record my desktop. Uh, on my computer. And occasionally when it works, we uh, do use a lapel mic. Yeah. Let's see if I can get this. Um, let's see if I can get this pencil sharpener. <laughs> oh, so man, my head, it really is in the way. Because uh, Nick just sent me a photo. Or send me a picture. Man, that that uh that charcoal is really stuck in there. Hold on, sorry folks, it's gonna be loud. It's not coming out. Oh, came out. <laughs> I think I just destroyed my desk, but it came out. Worth it. Yeah. Nick just sent me a picture of uh, Rivers looking at me uh, drawing, which is really cool. <laughs> nice. So here I'm just working a little bit of fur texture. I'm not. I'm just going to let it fade out down into here. What positions are open in animation to a student who has strong tradi traditional str uh, drawing skills? That has a weak uh, animation reel. Say that one more time. What positions are open in animation to a student who has strong traditional drawing skills but has a weak animation reel? Well, there's there's storyboarding. If you can draw really well and if you understand animation, uh, there's that. There's there's design work. There's development work. There's concept work. There's all kinds of you know, if you if you if you're a good draftsman, there's a lot of different things that you can do, a lot. Um, it's you know, it's just it's just a matter of what it is that that interests you. What would you choose, tea or cake or death? <laughs> tea, cake, or death? All of the above. No, not death. <laughs> tea and cake, man. <laughs> Look at me. I'm getting rounder. You can hear me getting fatter. Well, I for the secondary, like, I'll leave a, wait, no, wait. <laughs> uh, so here I'm, I'm just drawing in kind of the dark areas, the negative spaces between all the hairs. And I'll go in and define them a little bit later on. I'll be heading uh, to the zoo for my first time um, to start a new routine. How many animals uh, should I try with? Start with one. Just start with one. You know, figure out what animal you're going to draw and try to study that animal before you go out. That's one thing I recommend. So many people go out and they say, man, it's so hard to draw the animals. Well, I go out 
I've been studying the animals that I draw for a long time, so it's not as difficult for me to draw them. And I can draw them a little easier because I understand their anatomy. So I really recommend, you know, brushing up on the anatomy of whatever animal you choose to draw and really study it before you go out. And that way you'll have a little bit of a head start. I always recommend that. So here I'm just getting a little bit of fur texture coming in here. I'm going very loose with it. There we go. Can we see Dustin's lovely face? Oh yeah. Dustin, show me your lovely face. Show me your mug. <laughs> Here, but no! no. <laughs> that was that was awesome. <laughs> no! But I'll tell you what the comment. No, 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 no. Our headphone users are all deaf now from the pencil sharpener. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I told you it was going to be loud. I'm really sorry. I'm really, really sorry. <laughs> I had, I had the, the it, it, I've had this pencil sharpener. You can see how I, how I treat it. This is the same pencil sharpener I've had for like 25 years at Disney. I had this pencil sharpener and I, and I pound the hell out of it and it still just keeps on working. But every once in a while it'll break a lead off inside the, the, the blades and I, I can't I can't sharpen anything because the lead's stuck in there, so I got to pound it to get it out. There we go. It was a Dustin eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin eclipse of the heart. Caroline, <laughs> nice photo bomb. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm slowly what? working these shapes, these fur shapes. I'm not going to do too many of them. That's going to take me. It'll just take me forever. Like how much, uh, how much more do you wanna you wanna do before we end it? Oh, uh, well, uh, hey, don't rush me. I'm not rushing. Just asking. Uh, a little bit. I want to I want to get um, more of the white over here. Now that I've now that I've got the ability to sharpen my pencil. Your pencil. My pencil. How do you draw refine the fur? Can you speak on that a bit? Well, I really don't think about. Hold on. I don't think about individual hairs. I think about the shapes that the hairs make as they come together. Clumps of hair. And I really think about the value. So I think about the negative space, the shadow areas between clumps of hair and defining that. And by defining that, you're defining the clumps in a positive shape through a lighter value. And so um, I make sure that as I draw, I draw in the direction that the fur grows because that helps. You know, so the way I'm drawing now is I'm, I'm, I'm drawing in the direction that that fur is growing. And, uh, and so, you know, all of those little techniques add up to uh, giving the illusion of fur, even though I'm not drawing individual hairs. Uh, have you considered uh, coming to a falconry meet here in the U.S. to photograph and observe fox? And I, would love, while they hunt? I would love to. The NAFA... Uh, meets are a huge resource for it. We also have smaller state uh, regional meets as well. It would be so cool to have you as a guest speaker and demonstrator for our Raptors art. I would love that. And you know, one of my best friends, uh, Manny Carrasco, is a really, uh, he's a falconer as well. And so he would have, uh, be a great resource for that as well. And I'd like to get him involved. But Manny, uh, Manny's got a, a really great knowledge of raptors and um, matter of fact I wouldn't mind using him when we do our our, uh, our art talks in Britain when we go over there in the summer and do our workshops it'd be nice to have him there as well teaching when we when we're talking about the birds of prey a real question here yeah how much for the sharpener <laughs> <laughs> it's not for sale periscope question what career opportunities are there for pastel and charcoal artists uh, you know what? I don't know. 
That's a good question. Other than fine art, I'm not sure. Um, there's definitely illustration. You can do illustration. I, I've, I've seen a lot of illustrators that, that use those, uh, those mediums. But beyond that, I'm not sure as far as, you know, the entertainment industry. I don't know that there's a lot there anymore. But I could be wrong. So, I don't know. Spitfire on YouTube says, that cougar needs a gold earring. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Uh, YouTube question. Have you ever drawn a quail? Asking for scientific purposes. You know what? I have drawn quail. I was a kid the last time, I think, when I drew a quail. Um, more specifically, a Bob White. Um, I, uh, you know, I grew up in South Florida down in the swamps there, and we actually have a lot of, a lot of Bob White down there. And uh, I used to scare them up quite a bit. And, uh, and, I, and I, I love their markings, and so I found them really fascinating in that sense. And, and I wanted to teach myself how to do complicated markings like that. A lot of the ground-dwelling birds like quail, woodcocks, you know, snipe, uh, those types of birds have these very complex markings to break up their pattern and when they sit on the on the forest floor so they blend in and it's uh, it's a real challenge to draw that you know owls have the same thing you know all those markings are there to they're meant to blend in with their background and break up their shape so they can't be seen and uh i just you know for nature to to adapt like that and and over millions of years kind of figure that out is always just that's always been fascinating to me YouTube question, have you drawn a quail? Asking for scientific purposes. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite uh, what's your favorite course that you created and why? You know what? I don't know that I have a favorite. I really like the animation courses, just because I love animation, but I really I really love my animal drawing courses. And actually I think my my character design course I'm pretty proud of too. So i I think I just named all my courses. Yeah, you, you kind of did. <laughs> Just name one, Dave. No, but I, I, I don't know, because I, I like them all for different reasons. I like sharing. So, I don't know what to tell you. It's coming together. Yeah? Yeah. yeah? Oh, how's yeah. It, how's it looking on the screen over there? Oh, it's looking great. All I see is a little, little thumbnail of a screen up there. It looks good. So now what I want to do is I want to get some whiskers in there. Whiskers? Yeah, that's going to be like the finishing touches because I'm going to I'm going to call this one finished here pretty quick. Because like I said, I just wanted to do just this. Oh man, I really crunched. Oh no, I didn't. It's fine. Yeah, I think you made a couple of ears bleed during that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to put on the whiskers. Are going to those are going to be my finishing touches. And the secret to doing the whiskers is to just pick a path and go. Pick a path and go. Just draw, draw. Don't get sketchy with it. Don't press too hard because you don't want the lead to break, the, the graph, or the, ah! the tip of the charcoal to break. I don't know if that's too fine to see on there. Yeah, I can see it. There. There we go. And here. So did you buy your charcoal powder or just shaved it off uh, from your pencils? Is, is some from somewhere that came in earlier. I bought it. Wait. You can buy it in a big jar. So it comes. I'll show you the jar here in just a second. How much right are the socks at the end to stick? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. This is uh, Creta color. Right there. I get it off of Amazon. You can get it through Blix as well. It's called Creta Color and it's black charcoal powder. Already ground up, super fine. Awesome. Huh. 
Parents saying to their kids to get them to sleep. Did you draw fairy tales for <laughs> Dustin when he was a kid or get him to sleep? No, I, I actually, I, I would lay in bed with him and his sister and read them stories. Remember that, Dustin? Yeah, I remember those. Yeah. I always shorten the story. <laughs> or we'd make them up, and he'd go, that's not how it goes. Yeah. So, is, is my head in the way? Nah, it's, it's fine. That's funny, I remember watching the movie Elf for the first time. And when he's, when he's laying in bed, he's like, Dad! Yeah. Dad! I'm like, oh my God, that was me when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys called. But I think every kid does that. Oh, yeah. You guys were good kids. You and your sister. Yeah. I don't know what happened to us, but... Uh. <laughs> Those were good days. Question. Sorry, I got to pull that out. I'm an illustrator who wants to live off just my illustrations. I make a third of my income from it, but I'm struggling to crest the hill. Am I missing something or just keep at it? You know what, baby? You just got to keep at it. I don't know what else to tell you. It's just something that, you know, get yourself a really good online social media presence. That's something that really helped me after I left Disney. Um, let people know you're out there. That's, that, that's the biggest thing. Is you need to let people know you that you exist and so you know as much as you might hate it you got to get out there on social media and let people know who you are through your imagery and uh, and it'll happen it'll come together for you uh, would you start a charcoal drawing with white paper instead of toned paper oh sure you just you just have to know that you can't if you're starting with white paper you can't go in and do white highlights, right? Uh, so that's that's the only thing. Are the white pencils uh, pastel pencils? Well, they call them white charcoal, but I mean, obviously charcoal is burnt, so I don't say, think they're white charcoal, but they are. I, I think they're more like a pastel. But they do have the consistency of, of the charcoal pencils. So there's our whiskers. Do they show up? The whiskers, yep, they're there. I think that's coming together pretty good. What do you think, Dustin? Coming along good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2.45, too. Yeah, it's 2.45? Yeah, it's 2.45. All right, so that's not bad for an hour and 45 minutes. No, not bad at all. Looks great. Kind of happy with this. Yeah. You want to grab the other camera and we can do, you know, we'll do a finish up? Yeah, or... So, or uh, you this one. do a close like finish up up close. Yeah, we'll just we'll do a finish up as you know just to just to do a quick thing over the top of it. Okay. Sorry, with this camera here. Yeah, we'll be able and to we'll, see the questions anymore from my end. Yeah, I'm, we're gonna we're gonna kind of wrap up the questions because I wanna I want you guys to see it close up because if, if close you're gonna see all kind of the all the imperfections in it and I don't worry you know for me this is something that if I stand back from it it looks pretty good. You know, up close, you're going to see imperfections and everything, but that's okay. I'm not worried about that. What you doing there? No, nothing. You saying hi? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> nothing. So many wires. So we're going to wrap this up. I've actually got my grandkids coming over. So we're going to do some babysitting. Yeah. And, uh, but I wanted you guys to, I just, I love getting back in and working traditionally and, and, uh, and charcoal is one of my favorite drawing mediums. Just love it. Hey, Chuck, or Chuck, geez, sorry about really? that. Really? No, I was talking about, uh, Nick. Nick, can you throw that promo code back up again? Because I can't remember what it was. Was it, what was it? Charcoal. coming through did you yeah. switch it over yeah I switched it all right so I just wanted you guys to see this up close and Dustin will do a little pan over the whole thing and uh, and just know that you, you can get some really great results especially starting with a tone board like this 
you can really get some great results uh, if you just approach it very systematically. You know, I, I go into it, you know, first working out the drawing, letting that be my roadmap, then rubbing it all down with the tone, and then pulling it out with the pulling out highlights with the eraser, and then just pushing those darks and pushing the lights, going back and forth pushing back and forth on the lights and darks and eventually you get something that feels pretty good I'm just gonna slowly let this fade out because I don't feel like drawing all that texture in the neck <clears throat> and just let it you know get, get loose with it the secret sale remember this is a secret sale we got it back up Nick Nick put it up for those of you that are watching the stream, you uh, use the promo code, code cool. Charcoal Stream. Sorry, I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Charcoal Stream, and you'll get 35% off of my charcoal course today. So I've got an entire course that takes you through this process and uh, a lot more detail than this. And I'm pretty happy with it. I think you guys will like that course. So go check it out. It's on my uh, on my website, creatureartteacher.com. Thanks a lot for watching today, you guys. I am uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. I can't quite stop drawing. <laughs> Against a promo call. <laughs> can't stop drawing. Stop it. <laughs> Turn it off! Turn it off! Turn it off! <laughs> there we go. So there's my there's my my cougar. Um, and we did that in an hour and a half, an hour and forty five minutes, just under two hours. So you can see what you can create in just under two hours. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Actually, you know what I might do. I'm going to add, see, I always have to do this, don't oh, I, Oh, my time? Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I want a little bit brighter highlight. Just a touch. There, see? This gives it a little bit more. Oh, see? Yeah. Yes. See, said the blind man. As he handed me his hammer, as I gave him his hammer and saw. <laughs> All right. So there we go. Charcoal drawing. Get out there and try it. It's a lot of fun. Um, I There's there's not a lot to it. You just, and I, I got a little bit of dirt on my hands, but otherwise you, you can do it pretty cleanly. I recommend doing it on matte board. It has a nice, strong surface. I like doing it on a tone so you can get that range of values. You can go in there with the white, and it, it'll give it kind of a 3D effect, which is really cool. But um, get out there and give it a shot. Thanks for joining us today. Remember, the, uh, the promo code charcoal stream. you can get that 35% off of, our charcoal, of my charcoal lessons. And um, go out there and give it a shot. Put some beauty back in the world. We need to do that. Be good to somebody. Put your grocery card away. All those good things. Be good to somebody, especially now. we got the Christmas season coming up. But um, go out there and create some beautiful art, and I'll talk to you next week on Tuesday. Bye. Bye.